we'd like run into the backyard. Doesn't it look like better art if you're more realistic? This is what's happening right now. Very happy dog. Coop, are you so stinky? Are you getting me stinky? He desperately wants to be a lap dog, but he's too big. I need to go wash my hands, they're stinky. Ooh. Okay, I'm also packing. I know this may look like I'm packing for a long trip, but I'm just packing for like a two hour painting session with my niece. We're gonna meet over at my mom's in the backyard because Grady's gonna do some work for my mom with like yard work. My niece is gonna meet me over there and we're going to paint together. I've got a lesson for her. We're going to, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember if I've shown you these. We're going to, the lesson basically is gonna be like taking my mom's backyard. Here's a sketch I did. I'm gonna try to teach her how to take like the subject of a whole bunch of stuff that's going on, like looking around and taking things of the landscape that you like and how to narrow basically all the information, you know, all the stuff and how to just narrow it down and still kind of create a, a, a nice scene. So I've got this sketch that I kind of played around with, and then I have this one in a big sketchbook. I think I've already shown you all this. I just can't really remember. Oh boy, it's bright. This is just with charcoal pencil and some wax pastel. But I want to get the feel of like the house and the backyard and mom and Grady back there working and the neighbors that are all around and all their fences, just the busyness. So I'm packing for that. And yes, I'm taking 50 million different things because we have not painted or done art together in quite a while. And I've got a bunch of new like mediums that I want her to play around with. And I also just want a lot of options for her. So if she, I want her to use, like if she feels like I need to use something that is, in her comfort zone, I want her to have that because maybe all the other things that we're doing, like the subject matter feels complex or she may feel intimidated because we haven't painted in a while together and, and sometimes having a medium that you're used to. But she's pretty confident and she's a really great artist, so she may want to try something new. So I'm just gonna take a lot of things and have a lot of options and we're gonna paint together. Oh, I can't wait. But I do think it may rain this afternoon and so our plans may get canceled which would be a real bummer but we'll see so i wanted to show you this not packing for a trip just packing for a little half day outing hey guys i'm sitting here editing this video and i'm such a loser i'm such a youtube loser i totally forgot to film while we were painting the weather was horrendous and it was super windy so we ended up having to go in the garage and set up and then we were like kind of behind so we were just painting furiously we both like got into it in fact when we got done we both realized we were frozen like our feet were i mean we just we were both in it and you forget all about all the things so i have zero footage sorry about that i'll try to do better next time guys i'm setting up I've got a, a couple projects I want to wrap up. One of them is a sketchbook page that I started. One is um, a cover of a sketchbook that I'm decorating for my niece that I bought for her. And it's not going very well, but I wanted to share a couple of these. Let me put this up on the easel. It may be easier to share. I had this vision that we would sit over in the yard over here and kind of paint part of the house and the yard and my mom and Grady working and then do Basically, I wanted like to teach my niece how to incorporate a whole bunch of information into one sketch, but it was, let me talk to y'all this way. It was freezing cold when we got over there and the wind was, I mean, it was just whipping. So we had to set up in the garage. It really wasn't that bad because what we had to do, we'd like run into the backyard and like look around or go out into the driveway and look around to get ideas of like trees and houses and things like that. But that kind of worked out well because I wanted her to not get overwhelmed with all the information and then we also just made up stuff in our drawings or our painting so you know things in the backyards I mean we would go and like look but then we would just make stuff up because I wanted it to be really loose and 
just suggestions of things like that garden wasn't really there and then even like this hose this was in the garage i was just looking around the garage for like outdoor things and there was this neat orange like hose so I stuck that there. But we had to, Grady got done with the yard faster than we got done with our painting. So I want to do something in this area. I thought about just kind of documenting about the day, but now I'm, I'm not sure. So basically I want to take this and look at my preliminary sketches that I did before I went over there and take some information that I put like people in the backyard, the trampoline. What did I do over here? Oh yeah, I did that too with this one. Yes, so I just wanna put maybe some figures back there and use these as like references. I just kind of feel like sitting down and painting. And since I used my so flat paints for both of these, no, yeah, for both of these, I my lungs are already like from oil painting yesterday so I'm just going to use my regular acrylics and deal with it and paint on top and just kind of wrap these projects up it's a rainy spring day I'm not feeling 100% so I just feel like sitting down and taking it easy I've got some tea made and I'm just going to enjoy the day I mean look out my window oh I just noticed this holy moly look Wow, that's what I get to look at while I'm painting and that. So that's where I'll be sitting and looking at that. Okay, here's the finished sketch. I really didn't add a whole lot back here. I mean, in fact, I just added that figure. I just cut and dog. It's really interesting how just a few little marks really quick will create a figure or an animal. And then I added this wording or just kind of talked a little about the day and put the date. I'm super happy with it. I kind of liked how it felt like a kid's, a children's book with like this space here to write. I think it really turned out really, really fun. And every time I look at this page, I will have sweet memories from that day. I mean, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to do some more with her. The other thing that I'm going to do, I've not done this before. I think I've talked about how I always want to do this, but never do it. But I'm going to decorate the front of my really nice hardback sketchbook that I'm decided I'm just going to do something simple on it. I'm going to take some of my phrases that I say that I crack up at or that Grady and I crack up at and then sometimes you guys like. Sometimes y'all will write me and say, that needs to be on a t-shirt. There was one of those that I said recently. It was something like, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go look it up because I'll write it down. You would think I'd be able to remember my own sayings, but alas, no. It was something like, it's going good until it's not or something like that i'll show you the final result so i'm gonna have to go look up the phrase but i've seen some sketchbooks recently of people who've decorated the front and they've just put some wording and i really liked it so i think i'm just gonna go get some of my either flash paint or one of my acrylic paints and just like slop it on there i don't want it to be nice and tidy i want it to look you know slopped on there like like it was put on there with fun while having fun you know what i mean like when you look at it, it looks like somebody had fun putting that on there that's what I want it to look like. 
So I'm gonna be brave and do it. Yeah, right. Or like what? All right, I've got my quote here. I've got some water and paint. Actually, I need a palette. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not gonna even like really lay it out. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like it to like flow on here. Maybe I'll air draw, that's what I usually do. Cause it would be a shame to not get the whole saying on here. So I need to figure out about how big it was. Oh, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, let's see if I can remember that. <laughs> I'm really bad about things not fitting, words not fitting. Looks like I'm gonna have to do a couple coats of this. That's kind of a shame. I'm kind of now wishing I hadn't done it in such a bright color, but there it is. I also hope I spell everything right. I'm really bad about that too because I get focused on just the painting. Also not doing this as free as I wanted to. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I do think I'm gonna go over it with another coat, but I'm, I can already tell I don't really love this. Maybe I'll go over it with a different color instead. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll think of something to do to make it a little better. I don't know. This was a bad idea. This is exactly why I don't do this, but maybe I'll be happy with it after it's completely done. I just wiped it off and then I thought, well, I'm gonna choose a different color and then I saw I've got some nail polish. I like the color. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> we'll see. Feels like I'm gonna use this whole bottle. This will definitely be permanent because I can't wipe this off like I could the paint when it was wet, so I'm stuck with this. This price goes really well with what I'm actually doing. Okay, guys, I'm kind of cracking up. I mean, yeah, I don't... Okay. I mean, it's not nearly as, like, in your face as it was. It'll be fine. I mean, once, like, paint and stuff kind of gets on it, it'll be nice. I kind of like it to look, like, all used and worn. Oh, well. It's a little, like, not all that exciting. Oh well, I did it. As though it wasn't like bad enough, then I decided to add another phrase with, I bet you can't guess it, nail polish. I mean, oh, all right, well, hmm. I would not suggest this technique. It did not turn out very good, but it's fine, it's fine. I was responding to several comments recently about my loose painting style. They were asking things like, isn't it better art if you're, let me take this off. Isn't it, uh, doesn't it look like better art if you're more realistic? And somebody said, doesn't the average person think that? And I'm like, yeah, I think the average person does think that. And until you get to painting, you don't realize how hard loose painting is. There's so much that goes into it, knowing value and composition and design and lighting and how to use your paints. It's easier to paint every single detail. Like, let's say just grass. It's easier to go and do every single blade, but to suggest grass, to tell more um, in a painting, like what the feeling of the light is or how you're feeling, it's not easy. And then I feel like I'm in the next level even. I could paint loose and suggest things well, but now to add a whimsical element and create things out of my mind is really hard. Like you've got to know a lot about value and composition and design, all the things that I mentioned a minute ago. And that's why I'm struggling sometimes because I'm not strong in all those areas. I'm just good enough to be able to start playing in this. I still have a long ways to go. And you really realize when you see 
a more naive painting, something that has a childlike feel to it, you realize how hard it is to actually paint that when you've tried to paint that. I'm thinking of people like Maud Lewis. I don't know if you're familiar with Maud Lewis. She had zero training. She was more of a folk artist. I tried to paint some of her paintings or paint, I painted from some of her paintings for my bathroom. I have a book of hers and I took some of the paintings that I really liked and kind of did my own version. But as I was painting those, I was like, Maud, you didn't have training, but because you painted so much, you learned design and composition and value and all the things in proportion. I mean, that's another thing. And layout. It was not easy to reproduce these very childlike looking paintings. And as I was painting them, I was like, girl, you knew what you were doing. And people thought, oh, I could do this or a child could do this. Uh -uh -uh. I'm going to tell you right now, it's just not the case. It is not easy. And when I was teaching more classes, people always came to my class. My classes were always on like how to paint loose because that's what people wanted to learn from me. People that do paint very loose and do it well, usually they can paint something, render something almost photo photorealist, like really, really detailed. And sometimes if you can, are able to go back and look at their old, old work, you see that. It's a really interesting process because it's like you start off tight. It's like you have to learn all of that and then... Yeah, there's just a process, but most of us that paint like this can paint very detailed and have gone through a process and a style. So I wasn't expecting to get into all that. It is the weekend and I usually don't jump on here on the weekend, but I had two paintings sell this weekend. The two paintings went to one buyer. She's basically now a collector. So she bought this one and then emailed me to see if she could buy this one also. I may be having buyer's remorse a little. Actually, I guess it's not buyer's remorse if I'm selling it. What would that be called? Seller's remorse? Anyways, I've never sold any of our paintings, any of my paintings that are of like our house or property. But she was in love with it and she was already buying one, so I sold it. But here's the deal. Now I'm kind of like, hmm. You know, I'm kind of sentimental and so these things have memories for me. I feel like these were some of the first really good kind of landscapes of the view that I have from the kitchen. So now I'm like, mm. but what I'm going to do, I have two days before I'm going to ship this. So I am going to work furiously and paint some paintings from this because that's what I was going to do with this anyways. Come back to this because I loved how it turned out. So I am going to... I mean, just go crazy, slop a whole bunch out. You may would think, well, won't you have photos of this to look back on? Yes, but photos even of paintings are just like photos of anything else. You just do not get the detail. In fact, this one was very hard to replicate a accurate photo. It's on my website, marked sold now. It has so many kind of layers of color that I couldn't get it all. You know, I get, I, I, I settled for the majority of the painting being accurate, but I do think Annie is going to be very excited when she gets this because it's even, it's just way more stunning in person. And I haven't told her this yet. I need to tell her this one particularly has the most amazing feel. Now she's going to frame it. So she's only going to get to feel it, you know, before she frames it, but it feels like wallpaper because often I will gesso the back and this one I really gessoed up well. And it also has a lot of layers on the of paint on the front. And so then it feels like really high end wallpaper and it feels amazing. Okay. I'm getting off track here. So what was I saying? So I want to use this as reference while I have it in person because it will not be the same looking at it from a photo. It just will not. And I did this one in acrylic and colored pencil. And I love the effect of the color pencil on top. I did that because that's kind of how some of the strokes are. In case you thought I was having a seizure. It wasn't. It was just, yeah, okay. Uh, there's just these little, little color variants that I want to capture with paint. And usually what happens is this first version is usually amazing and then it just gets more and more and more interesting. So I only have one version of this so far. I named or I titled it Our View Number One on the website. Sold. That means hopefully I'm going to have more. 
I'll have to take the number one off if I don't end up producing more sellable ones, but this is making me very excited. So I'm gonna get my paints out. I do not know. I cannot promise that I'm going to document much because I need to work furiously. I'm on a time crunch. She told me I could keep these as long as I wanted, but she's already paid for them and I need to get, you know, I need to get those to her. And also, if you are interested in paintings for sale, they are on my website. This is how we've done it. We've not done like a shop. Basically, the prices are on the paintings. You email me if you are interested in a painting. And then also, if you ever see a painting that I'm working on, on my vlogs here or on Instagram, you can always message me and ask if it's for sale. And I'll give you a price and then we can work something out. That's what Annie did for this one. She was like, hey, what about... Is this for sale? Because I have got 50 million paintings that are not on the website. I mean, I have so many paintings. In fact, let me just preface this with follow me on Instagram because what I'm gonna be doing sometimes are doing kind of these little, let me think of a name, flash sales or something like that. Basically, I'll hold up or post five or six paintings that I'm like, here's the price and these are for sale. Message me kind of thing. Make sure to follow me Oh, the there. Leave me a message, private message over on Instagram if you want to connect and purchase and become a collector. All right, I gotta go get to work. Got things to do, important things to do. All right, gotten all set up. I've decided to use a black gessoed paper since this has, maybe this was, yeah, this was probably black gessoed also. And I decided to use my flash paints mainly because they're already out and set up and I'm just gonna tackle it. Let me just kind of mention, I am looking more at this painting than I am this. I'm kind of looking down and seeing what the movement looks like and doing that with my hand because this is just the beginning stages. So I want to be able to play freely, get some nice marks. I'm going to turn the camera off for now and then I'll be back at some point. I'm listening to Authentic Obsessions while I work on this. So I used color pencils and I used my really cheap oil pastels, my Pentel oil pastels, and just had a ton of fun. And if I put something on there that I didn't like, like I had a really bright pink in some areas, I just used this thing and scraped it off. And it does still leave some there, but then that just kind of adds to it. I forgot how fun this kind of mark making is. I mean, to me, it's a, it is different from the original one, but um, I'm thrilled. This was a lot of fun. I have this one here too that I just did a really simple first wash of color with my flash paint. I really love this and I kind of want to not put those big trees also. I think I'm going to set this one aside and use this one once I mail the original to Annie and then I'll make marks on this and kind of use this as a reference but I love this. I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. 